some of the questions you people come up with i'll tell you what i think some of you are trying to get me in trouble <laughs> but uh you know i uh, i'll read this email here i'm not going to share the thing and share the name or anything because i keep it private but uh it says hello brian i've been watching your videos since 2015 i have a question for you relating to race and kindreds because i know you don't shy away from this topic very true my question is as follows have you heard about the bell curve did a little bit of looking into it i hadn't before receiving the email so i have now but that the races have different iqs and that blacks have lower iqs than whites or asians do you believe that blacks have been cursed by god and with a lower iq than the other races i know you teach against interracial marriage and are not afraid of these types of questions thank you for, in advance for answering my question regards name um, well i'm certainly not going to shy away from the question um, but uh, I just pray that you listen to what I'm going to say here before judging and things like this. Do I believe that uh, different races have higher and lower IQs? No, I do not. Um, I'm going to show you why, but let me just say this real quick. I got my computer up over here. The bell curve, it was written by um, Richard Hernstein and Charles Murray, okay? Two Harvard educated psychiatrists, or psychologists, excuse me, sick. I don't think of too much of psychiatry or philosophy or psychology, things like that. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, oppositions of science falsely so-called, according to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a bunch of nonsense. Um, so much of what is called science today is completely subjective. Okay, let me just give you a little example here. Okay, you take, you say, how can I prove? I mean, just let's look at this thing logically. I want to prove that white people are more intelligent than black people. Okay, how do you determine that? How? What are your test subjects? Well, you go and you get a, a white guy from Harvard and you go get some black guy that lives out in the plains in Africa and you say, you know, who's smarter? Well, obviously it's the black man in, in the plains of Africa. You say you're, you're being sarcastic. No, actually I'm not. You see, the black guy out in the plains of Africa he can hunt, he can fish, he doesn't have to worry about taxes, he makes his own home, he can survive out in the wilderness. Uh, he probably knows how to heal himself with all kinds of natural remedies and things. Whereas the white guy at Harvard is uh, probably sick, um, sickly, he's probably on some kind of prescription meds and stuff like this. Has a lot of book knowledge in his head, thinks he's intelligent, but uh, if you put the two men out in some wilderness place someplace, the white guy would be dead in a few days, maybe even a few hours. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Again, why am I saying this? What's the test for IQ? Intelligence quotient is what that means. How do you determine IQ? Oh, uh, well, we've, we've set parameters whereby somebody that knows, you know, arithmetic and somebody that knows, you know, science, <laughs> um, you know, they know all this stuff and some other guy that lives out in the wilderness, he's stupid because he doesn't know all the book learning stuff. See what I'm saying? It's this whole system is evolution based whereby they are the ones that are coming out. I'm not saying that, that black people are stupid and dumber than white people or something like that. I'm going to show you what the Bible actually says about this whole thing. Um, you see, it's this, this, all this science stuff, it's so funny because they are the ones that come out and they are actually the ones that are teaching true racism, which is one race is superior than the others and, you know, intellectually and everything else. Um, again, you know, I mean, and they say, well, you know, we can prove it because of, you know, certain demographics and certain, you know, you look at societies and things, you go back 500 years ago, what was going on in Germany 500 years ago, what was going on in Papua New Guinea 500 years ago, then we can determine which one's smarter. But again, by what standard? Because one has lots of civilization and, and they're, you know, doing all kinds of intellectual types of things and the other guys are out fishing, you know, or, or hunting antelope or something like this. I mean, how do you determine which one's more intelligent than the other? Let me show you what the scriptures say about the thing of intelligence, where it comes from. All right. Uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. God opened their understanding. The, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God. God the Father in spite of what some of the brethren seem to think. You know, Daniel chapter 2. See, well, I don't understand. That's called, it's called the mystery of godliness. 
Daniel chapter 2, verses 22 to 23. Uh, well, I'll start in verse 19. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. And He changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with Him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desire of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Did I see anything in there about Daniel saying that only the Jews get the wisdom from God? No. God was dealing specifically with the nation of Israel. But uh, we're not in that setup anymore, number one. Number two, I believe that there were other great wise people that were not of the Jews. God reveals the meaning of Scripture. God gives wisdom. Regardless of what kindred you are or what race, to use the modern term, you are. Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40, verse 8. We'll see one more here. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And these dreams were prophetic types of things. They were things that actually came to pass. But notice Joseph there, he says, do not interpretations belong to God. God gives wisdom. God gives understanding. I'll show you another verse of Scripture. Go back to the book of James. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you Jews lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Oh, wait, no, it didn't say that. Okay, if any of you uh, German, Aryan, what it, oh, it didn't say that either. No, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally. Giveth to all men? Yeah. And it braideth not, and it shall be given him. You see, the system of the bell curve and psychiatry and psychology and all that other stuff it's a satanic system designed to make certain people mentally sick and other people mentally well. If you go along with the system, well, then you're mentally well. If you go against the system, well, you have a problem. We want to help you with your problem. And all we're going to do is just take you here into the hospital and drug you with uh, our pharmaceutical drugs, which are petrochemical based. And we're going to destroy your mind because we're trying to help you. Don't you understand? <laughs> well, that's right, because you're mentally sick. You can't understand. <laughs> Okay, um, no, the, the whole intelligence quotient uh, scam, the IQ test stuff, is, you know, in, in the medical world, they have what's called the homeostatic model, the homeostasis, whatever. And what they do is they say, um, give you an example, blood pressure. Blood pressure is supposed to be 120 over 80, 120 over 80, 120 over 80, 120 over 80. Okay, so if you're, you know, you get two men, one of them, uh, you know, is a, is a couch potato. He's 75 years old. He's, you know, 200 pounds overweight. And he comes walking in with his walker into the doctor's office uh, and flops down. Uh, and he says, roll up your sleeve. Okay, there. They put the thing up, you know. And you get some young man and he, he, his car broke down, you know, five miles away. And he just jogged in for his appointment. And he comes running and he says, I'm here for my appointment. And I say, okay, roll up your sleeve. Okay, they're supposed to have the same blood pressure. Why? The homo homeostatic model. It's supposed to be 120 over 80. That's insanity. Okay? <laughs> That's not good. And you get the young man, you go, oh, your blood pressure is way up. Wow, you have high blood pressure. <laughs> he just came in running. You know? You say to the other, the older, older man and stuff, well, your, yours is up too. Yeah, because well, he's got hardened arteries and stuff and he's trying to pump the blood through there. You know? You get somebody that's just about dead and you go, oh, you're low blood pressure. We got to bring it up again. You know, just have them watch my videos. That gets people's blood pressure up. I'm helping people, see? <laughs> but getting back to the subject here, uh, you know, we should have a specific thing that says if you can do A, B, and C, then you're intelligent. 
See, and if you don't, if you if you're in certain economic situations, and if you're living in certain things and you're certain races, then we can prove that you don't match our standards for what is intelligence. It's evolution. Okay? It's evolutionary insanity. And evolution is a religious philosophy that is going to reach its full fulfillment in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, it's a religious philosophy that justifies mass murder, is what it is. Adolf Hitler practiced it. All right? And you know, any evolutionist out there that says, oh, I believe in evolution, well then practice it. Okay? I mean, practice what you preach. If you truly believe in evolution, then you believe that the, you know, the best way to evolve is to eliminate the weak. I mean, seriously, that is what evolution is. That's what it teaches. And these, these atheists, oh, that's not what we... Bunch of stinking hypocrites. They don't practice what they preach. But, you know, there's not one verse of Scripture that says anything at all about intelligence being, you know, greater or lesser for one group of people. You say, well, uh, what about the Hamites? What are the, the, the black people? You know, the descendants of Ham. Because uh, the Bible gives basically three different, you know, um, three different races, if you will, three different uh, ethnicities, so to speak. And then they descend from there. And there's a lot of variety with that. But you have the flood in the days of Noah, and then his three sons go out to populate the earth. They have Shem, Japheth, and Ham. Shem is the father of the Oriental races, the Jews and, you know, Indians and things like that. It's kind of the East. Japheth is the Gentiles, the Isles of the Gentiles, the European countries. Ham goes south into the continent of Africa. So you have Egypt, the Egyptians are Hamite, and then you have the whole way down through Africa. And you say, well, clearly, you know, we can see that the Europeans are superior because they have the most advanced culture, the most advanced, all the other things, so they're obviously superior intellectually. Okay. Um, well, again, how are we looking at this thing? You see, um, the Europeans, let's just say this way. The European creates a computer. And you got this little iPhone thing now, and the, and the white man carries around his iPhone all the time, and he can't think apart from some stupid little machine that needs to be recharged and can break and cannot. It's, why isn't this thing working? I, where did I put that thing? You get some African out in the plains or out in the jungle or something like this, and he goes, oh, cool, look at that. I set, set that snare hey, there's a rabbit in it or something like that. And he goes over and he kills the thing and he sits down, squats down, and he starts a fire. He doesn't need matches or lighter and he's got the thing going and he's eating and stuff like this. You go up to him and you say, how'd you learn that recipe? Did you get that off the internet someplace? You know, wildrabbitstew.com uh, or something? He looked at you, no, <laughs> I don't need the internet. What in the world? <laughs> Who's really more intelligent, you see? Again, what is the standard for intelligence? So, um, you know, racial prophecies are in the Bible. I'll tell you that. Um, the Bible says that uh, Noah says he basically prophesies. Let me show you, just in case you've never heard this before. Um, Genesis. Go back to the book of Genesis, first book in the Bible. Genesis chapter. And, you know, you do the study into these guys that, you know, promoted evolution. They were like rabid uh, racist. I mean, true racist. They, they hated black people. I don't hate black people. Um, in fact, I love black people. That's why I say you shouldn't intermarry with them because then they're not black anymore. You have children that aren't black. Multiculturalism is actually about destroying culture. Genesis chapter 9, verse 24. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, Ham's son, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Okay? So, there are three prophecies given there. A servant of servants, Canaan there, the descendants of Ham, they will be servants. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Uh, blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Okay? Jesus Christ is going to come through the line of Shem. He's going to be Shemitic. And Canaan shall be his servant. Canaan's there to serve. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell, dwell in the tents of Shem. Okay? God has enlarged Japheth to the point where you have Europeans that say, hey, we're sick and tired of this Roman Catholic persecution over here in Europe back hundreds of years ago. Let's go to the tents of Shem. 
Where's Shem at? One of the places is America. So that's why my ancestors came here. I can tell you that. They were Anabaptists. They came here to America to get away from Roman Catholic persecution. All right. We came here to the tents of Shem. I went to Pequay Valley High School in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Pequay Valley. But I grew up near the town of Strasbourg. German sounding name of the town, and yet the area I went to high school was the Pequay Valley. And I used to hang out at the Susquehanna River. Those are Indian names, Native Americans, you see? So there are, if you would call it, racial prophecies in the Bible. Um, but, you know, and, and by the way, you say, well, I find it demeaning that, that you know, the, that Noah would say that Canaan is going to be a servant of servants. Well, I, it's kind of funny because uh, Lord Jesus Christ talked about uh, whoever's greatest among you, let him be as a servant. So if you have a, a descendant of Ham there, a black person, like the email was asking about, and they get into the role of being a servant, and they say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help people, I'm going to serve people, and things like that. That's good. You know? And you can get into all kinds of other stuff on this, you know, and everything else. But I don't believe there is such a thing as a, a, you know, black people somehow cannot learn the Bible the way a white man can, or the way a Shemite can, or whatever else. No, I don't believe that. Uh, I don't see that in Scripture. Um, there are things there that we're supposed to do. I do see that. God will enlarge Japheth. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Canaan shall be a servant of servants unto his brethren. Sure, those are there. But that doesn't mean that a black person can't know this book equally or better than a white person or a Jew or any other Shemite. Um, so that's the way I would answer that question. And again, you know, the thing of interracial marriage, just to explain it one more time, um, I don't believe in interracial marriage simply because I want to preserve the races. Interracial marriage, just like multiculturalism, destroys culture. It destroys kindreds of people. It destroys distinction. I mean, if you get a, a, a glass of pure grape juice and a glass of pure, um, you know, uh, what would be a good orange juice, okay? Pure grape juice, pure orange juice, and you go and you mix them together, you say, well, it's mixed. It's wonderful. It's mixed. It's, it's, it's a new thing. Yeah, but you can't get back, you see. I mean, if God intended there to be orange grape juice or something like that, he'd have grown them you know, on the same tree, you know? That's all I'm saying. People are going to get excited probably about this too, you know? I realize there's going to be a lot of people who probably won't even watch the video and they'll just be going, he thinks black people are stupid. I don't think black people are stupid, <laughs> you know? The Bible doesn't teach that. Uh, I'm not the one saying this stuff, okay? This bell curve thing by these two Harvard, uh, you know, psychologists and stuff, they're the ones that are saying that black people have lower IQs. I don't teach that. The Bible doesn't teach that, all right? If you're black and you're kind of dumb, well, then call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, first of all, and then ask Him for wisdom. Um, I'm kind of stupid, you know? Uh, I'm not a, a great, highly educated man or whatever else, but I've... Ask the Lord for wisdom, and He gives it to me. He gives to all men liberally, and upbraideth not. Best thing that you can do is call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, and then say, Okay, Lord, now that I'm saved, can you please give me some wisdom? I still pray that. I prayed that many, many years ago before I started to study for the ministry, and uh, the Lord's given me a whole lot of uh, wisdom over the years, uh, which is no glory to me. It's all glory to Him, and I thank Him for putting me into the ministry and counting me faithful. And the uh, Lord will do it for anybody. I believe that. So that's going to be it. I hope I answered the question. Um, I think I covered everything. So <laughs> I can just tell. <laughs> I'm probably going to get some real good comments on this one. People not watching the thing. but So that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.